Brought to you by Copel, the world's biggest delivery link art fund. A Bloomberg UTD Pulse Initiative. is going to be on the recovery of the art market and the outlook uh, looking into 2011 and beyond. First episode, of course, we spoke to you about art as an investment tool. Today, we go one step further. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Good to be here again. All right. So, I guess we can get kicked out of straight away by looking a bit at the history of uh, the evolution of art, I guess. That's right. But before we get into that, let's first introduce you to our panelists. We have with us Mr. Vod Krishnamachari with us, a very well-known artist, a curator, and now He's running his own gallery, DMB, as well. Also here with us is Mr. Gopal Mesandani. He's an art writer and a chartered accountant as well. A perfect mix of mm -hmm. art and business. And we have with us uh, actor and dancer Shivani Vazir. She's going to be speaking to us on just purely loving art and really not caring about the market right. there. But first, before we go any further into this discussion, let's take a look at a brief history of the art market and we're going to be talking about how it's going to perform in 2010 and 2011. Let's also find out how it performed when it first started to pick up from the 1990s. The Indian art market has undergone transformational changes since the arrival of Sotheby's in the late 1990s to Taya Mehta's phenomenal Mahisasura in 2005 to the present resurgence. Mahisasura was auctioned for a record $1.6 million at Christie's in London. Since then, creations of masters like Raza, Suza, and Hussain have met with rapturous reception in international auctions, setting new heights for Indian art. Since they have met Hussain, Gaitonde, Raza, Suza, Ramkumar, uh, all these artists were pioneers of Indian contemporary art post independence. So I think all of them are very, very important. Tayyar has got a very small body of work. As far as his aesthetic excellence is concerned, or to say aesthetic value, his aesthetic value was established long back. I mean, when I met him in 1988 for the first time, his aesthetic value was already established. The market value was not established yet. But it's not just the master's work that enjoyed a great run at the market. We reached the point where contemporary art was riding as high a wave and sometimes even competing with the prices of the masters. Subodh Gupta's sculpture, A Very Hungry God, was auctioned for a record $1.4 million at Saffronath. And Bharti Care's iconic elephant set a new benchmark at $1.53 million. The Kanokia celebrated artworks represent not only an investment in alternative assets, but also in timeless wisdom. Art is beautiful. The true value of art far transcends the usual business cycles that most investments encounter. Yeah, they're starting to, I mean, the market is starting to have some confidence again. I mean, where we're seeing the market inside of India be um, coming back the fastest is, of course, for the more established artists. So it makes sense. People feel confident buying these or Ram Kumar or R.P. to sing because these are senior artists that are, you know, they're, 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 their places in history are well established. So the next step would be artists such as Rosalia, Sibos, Bukja. Um, you know, who have pretty much made their reputation already and they're working with serious galleries both in India and outside of India. So people feel comfortable with that. Okay, 
Okay, that's a little bit about the history. Let's get straight down to the recovery process and looking ahead uh, into the art world. Well, let's start off with you. You have an interesting vantage point, being an artist yourself and being associated with the gallery. Is the worst over from what we saw from 2008 to about 2010, you think? And is this perhaps a sustained recovery on the basis of what we've seen from Parthi and Razor State? I think it's getting better and better. And it is going to be really a good time for Indian art, you know, in, in international market and stuff like that. And lots of people are looking at the younger generation of artists, you know, um, young talent, you know, people are scouting for young talent, and they they can see there are lots of, you know, wealth underneath their canvas or drawings or sculpture, installation, etc. Nowadays, everybody is looking at not just canvas, they are looking at, um, for example, Bhati Chair, she is a contemporary artist. And when you look at the surface of uh, elder country, you know, it is with the firms and stuff like that, you know, but, you know, people are not do- looking at beauty, beauty is not the thing, you know, people are interested in the content, you know, so the collectors are learning, more aware, and they are, you know, there are lots of, lots of potential in contemporary art. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me just get in Shivani at this point. Uh, Shivani, when we hear both say that people not really looking at beauty, now you're someone who's been uh, looking at art, collecting art, purely uh, following it as a passion really for the pure love of art. Uh, you think you're ever going to reach a point when you buy a painting thinking that its value is going to appreciate in the next five years? You know, one of the things that both said about content, that's absolutely true. When you said about beauty, that's not true. Because in content there is beauty and perhaps what both are saying is the normal uh, vision of beauty being perfect, uh, perfect skin, a perfect feature. But to me beauty is something that mesmerizes you and art in a sense is recording whatever is going on around us. It could be in your environment, it could be in your mind and in that quality of going into someone's mind or their lives and what's happening around them lies the beauty. And in that beauty lies the content. And I think um, art is something that has been a part of our DNA forever. It's not something that we say now there's a market for it, so now people should start collecting. It's a natural instinct of a human being to want to record, to want to draw. Drawing is very relaxing, is very rejuvenating. And to record our history has always been a passion. Fair point. Uh, Kumar, uh, let's talk a little bit about the road ahead. As I said in the previous episode, I was raising the point with one of our guests as to whether a couple of these recent paintings are actual green shoots off the market, uh, whether it's Ratha or Bharti, or are these just flash of the pants? And, uh, you know, because the size of the Indian market, as we were discussing last time around as well, is very, very small. I mean, when you look ahead, you don't buy anything with the prospect of it not appreciating. You want to create sure, wealth, sure, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, you'll have uh, the yeah. Shivani here and there, yeah, where, yeah. you know, you buy for the love of sure, it. But sure. if people are, from the middle yeah, class yeah. level, looking to get into it, they want to make money off yeah, it, sure, like, sure, you know, sure. be clear about that. Yeah, yeah. So is this a good time to perhaps be entering if you're looking out there maybe one to you? Yeah, I think this is a good time because, uh, for one, we just come out and the bubble has burst and prices are down and from the top, from the peak. See, the thing is that it's not buying any art. It's about, you know, the, the key thing, the key uh, word I use is cultural consensus. So if you believe that artist is good and there's a cultural consensus of the artist, not like for instance, Suza, Nasri, Mohammadi, they, they all have a cultural consensus. Quite a fair point there, but uh, what, what we'd also like to bring up in this discussion here is um, of, of the modern versus contemporary. Yes. As a collector, would you also put in work or your money on your contemporary art? Yeah, I bought a contemporary art. Yeah? Of course I have. Right. And there's, there's no fear involving their performance, their stability. See, the thing is that uh, when I collect, okay, I collect for two reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, primarily, I, I collect for I love art. I'm right. passionate about it. And uh, art is part of my life, okay, at some level. But obviously, when I put money, you know, you know buy, when I buy this, there has to be a threshold. You know, beyond a point, you know, I have to look at, as a collector, you know, you have to look at what I'm paying for it. Right. Okay, so there's a threshold. Okay. So beyond that, it's not about you know, passion and, you know, uh-huh. all of that. There's a, there's a special for everybody. Right. We'll, we'll have to take a tiny break at this point of time. We're going to continue with this discussion yeah. of modern versus contemporary in just a bit. <laughs> 